Bullet holes and blasted out windows. We are now seeing the full extent of the damage of a one-man shooting spree. It happened last night in Snohomish County. We appreciate you joining us. I'm Marnie Hughes. And I'm Matt Lorch. The accused gunman is in this case, is now in the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries after a shootout that spanned three cities targeting police and a police sergeant is among the hurt. This all started late last night in Granite Falls, then it moved to Lake Stevens, and then it ended in Marysville when officers closed in on that shooter. We have team coverage starting with Q13's Hannah Kim, who is live with the latest developments for us. Hannah, what do you know? Well, Marnie, police say 43-year-old Hans Hansen of Granite Falls fired dozens and dozens of shots across three cities in Snohomish County. The motive is still unclear, but one thing is for sure, he wanted to hurt police officers. I can't believe one guy can do so much damage in one short span. The shooting rampage began in the dark of night. But only in the light of day is the extent of the damage clear. He was driving while he was shooting. Police cars shattered and 10 bullets pierced the walls of the Lake Stevens Police Department. Here is the path of one bullet. It came through the wall, then went through this metal can. Then the bullet went through the bathroom wall here, then hit the toilet. Luckily, nobody was inside, as Lake Stevens police officers were on the way to Granite Falls, where Hans Hansen allegedly shot several rounds into the police station there. Commander Dennis Taylor says it's amazing no one was killed. It's very fortunate. From Lake Stevens, the suspect drove to Marysville, and again, the bullets flew. Residents near Grove Street took cover. This loud pop, 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 pop. Pop, 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 pop. My wife was in her in bed. I made her get off the bed to the floor. About an hour into the rampage, Marysville PD caught up to Hansen in this Ford F-250 pickup truck on 64th Avenue Northeast. Police say Hansen fired at officers, got back in the truck, and took off. Off and on, he slowed down and exchanged gunfire with officers who were on his tail. Marysville Sergeant Jim Maples was hit in the leg. It all came to an end on Grove Street. I watched all the officers start converging in on the gentleman where officers shot Hansen. Investigators say they found all these guns inside his truck, along with many rounds of ammunition. You're shooting at a cop, and you're coming through a neighborhood like this. That's not wise. Jim Maples, the officer hit in the leg, is recovering at home tonight. He's doing okay. We're told it's actually his birthday, and he's also a cancer survivor. Two other Marysville, Marysville police officers who exchanged gunfire with the suspect, they have been put on paid administrative leave, which is standard protocol. We've also learned that Granite Falls Police Chief David Bowman had some type of medical emergency while he was responding to the scene last night, and tonight he's still at the hospital. Guys, back to you. All right, Hannah, we're also learning more about the accused gunman Hans Hansen and what may have triggered his shooting rampage. Sources tell us he had some health problems and a failing business. Steve Kiggins spoke to his old landlord in Granite Falls where that shooting st spree started. More than 30 bullet holes riddle the side of this building on Mountain Loop Highway. I think he's crazy to be able to go and do that. Like, I don't know, no normal person would do that. I think he must have either been on something or I don't know. Sergey Fedorchek works in this building where Hansen used to have a business. I don't know, he seemed like a normal guy to me, but I'm, I don't know. Hansen's former landlord tells me he started the shooting spree right here. The bullets going through the walls, leaving these massive exit holes. The landlord, who wouldn't go on camera, says he evicted the suspect two years ago after his cabinet business dried up and he was more than a year behind on the rent. I talked to his wife this morning and, and she was pretty disturbed and wasn't ready to talk about it. Um, so we just didn't know what to think. Ann Holmes lives right next door to Hanson in unincorporated Lake Stevens. She says police lined the street early this morning, just hours after the shooting spree. I was putting two and two together, and when I saw his truck on there, I knew for a fact that it was probably him because his truck wasn't there this morning. Holmes says she's known the Hansons for several years, and she's heartbroken over what's happened. Maybe he just wanted to, a policeman to shoot him, a suicide mission. I, I wasn't sure. Now, despite Hansen's problems, police still have not pinpointed a motive in the shooting. Hansen's still in the hospital, and he's still yet to face a charge of a crime. We're live in Everett, Steve Kiggins, Q13 Fox News.